Well, I did get a good laugh the other day when uh, one of the guys, you know, that's trying to get a hold of you to, to get his smoke more, his more, to get his smoke turkey bottle. He's like, hey, man, I've been trying to get a hold of John. He, he doesn't seem to be answering. I'm like, man, last time I talked to him, he said he was out with a kid delivering bottles. So, I mean, he's somewhere. He's got his phone. I was like, you just need to send him another message and put in caps lock in the header, free food. He'll answer <laughs> when he sees the preview. No lie. Then this guy doesn't even know I'm setting this up as a troll for John. Replies back later. Got a hold of him, man. Thanks. That free food thing really worked, too. That was not the case. He never texted me <laughs> free food. <laughs> I wish he did, but he didn't. I wish he did. I appreciate your effort, but he didn't even, because I would have been there. Like, I would have made him give me free food at that point. <laughs> everyone my name is john edwards and with me is Zeke baker and together we make the dad's trick at bourbon wherever you are whatever time it is thank you for making us a part of your day hello zeke baker hello john edwards want to let you know today's show is sponsored by cascartel.com changing the industry standard as to how you get your alcohol they are one of only two exclusive online partners to have the blackened metallica special set it is a hundred box set limited edition if you're a metallica fan this might be your jam there's two limited edition 12 inch metallica vinyl picture discs they got a whole bunch of stuff in there and there's one collect one drink three there's all different sets there's one collect one drink one which actually comes with two of them check them out at cascartel.com find that with a bunch of other stuff at the same time you know whether or not you want your whiskey your bourbon your scotch your gin your rum amaro tequila mezcal whatever it is get it sent right to your door it's a convenience play yes some allocated things cost a little bit more online but your regular daily drinkers, you should be able to get them shipped directly to your door at a fair and reasonable price, meaning that you don't have to leave the house. So check out cascartel.com and check them out on Instagram at cascartel. It is Memorial Day. We are recording on Memorial Day. Just want to let everybody know this is coming out Wednesday, but take a second, reflect and, and be grateful for all of those that have served and made the ultimate sacrifice for this country very important that you reflect on the sacrifices that people have given to all of us so so thank you if you are a military veteran or if you you know have family members that were veterans all the people out there not just the people who gave the ultimate sacrifice thank you for your service speaking of that we have one of those people on with us tonight we have three of our very dear friends that I don't know why the hell they decided to start their own whiskey company, but they decided to. The one and only Michael Hines, our friend Casey, I can't even pronounce his last name. Steve. And then, of course, the one and only James Davenport. Thank you for your service, my friend. The three of you make Nashville Barrel Company. How are you guys today? Thanks for having us on, John and Zeke. It's uh, you know Memorial Week, and hopefully you guys got some barbecue, some drinks, and some grilling in. Uh, I know you got your drinking in. I had a fire going, so it was great. I made s'mores two out of the three nights this weekend. It was great. 89 degrees, John. Is, is s'mores really, uh, you know, is that just an excuse to eat chocolate or you know, we weren't staying warm? <laughs> no, I mean, the fire's not there for warm. The fire is there to make me fatter. <laughs> Did you try the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup s'more? My wife made that last week. First time I ever had it. It's amazing. Zeke, have you ever had that? Not that I can recollect. It does sound uh, interesting. I just wonder, uh, it seems like it'd be a little drying. I don't know. It, it may be a bit complex for your palate. I don't know. So you may just want to try it. Too. Uh-huh. We, we know I'm a one trick pony. Let, let's be honest. <laughs> if it doesn't taste like cow tails or frosted flakes, Zeke is not going to be there. John, have we talked about the only time that I have had pizza with Zeke? No. <laughs> I'm with Zeke. It's a little late at night. We've had a drink or two. Zeke says, let's order some pizza. And I think this is the smartest thing Zeke's ever said. Right? I mean, we're now we're clicking. We're on the same page. So uh, I think it was Mafiosa's. 
and uh, we were at the uh, the old whiskey house. So he oh, walks over. Oh, it was Donato's. Yeah. See, I'm scarred. I've, I've like I've, I've kind of removed some of this from my memory. Long story short, John, the, the pizza shows up. I am excited. It's kind of my version of Waffle House at two in the morning. I open it up, and Zeke's got nothing but like cinnamon on this damn pizza. Who puts cinnamon on a freaking pizza? You said you wanted Hawaiian. That's the way they make it. I don't know. I said pepperoni. Hawaiian is ham and pineapples. Where's the cinnamon come in here? For some reason, they do it at Donato's. I don't know, man. Ever since then, I've really kind of had a hard time trusting (laughs) Zeke's palate now. Okay, hold on. I'm looking this up. Dude, I am I am hoping that it was cinnamon and just Zeke and I were just not that trash that we <laughs> Wow. Donato's Hawaiian pizza is shaved ham, pineapple, sliced almonds, and cinnamon. See? Dude, lots of cinnamon. I'm talking uh, this thing. It was it, you know, I was expecting, you know, a Canadian bacon, something with a little savory. And what I got was basically just a cinnamon bomb, and it was, uh, I'm so scarred from this. Is that something that made you question his palate for the rest of your life? It made me question our friendship. <laughs> At least I never have to worry about being the one on the hook for ordering food now. <laughs> Very true. I'm just going to move us forward because Zeke's palate has been questionable to me for five years. James has run multiple liquor stores, has an amazing palate, is known for great, great picks. Heinz is known for being the best person in the game under 5'2". <laughs> is just between his fuck cancer picks, his work in the Crusaders, his work in in Karma, and just all the various groups you're in, your very well known presence. And then Casey was in a group with Zeke and I for about five minutes, so we've known Casey for a while too. I mean, the three of you are very well respected in the whiskey game. What made you decide to take that leap and go be an NDP? I'll take this one and at least start off how it kind of started uh, from my perspective. And we, we, you know, we might have different perspectives, but, you know, one thing that, uh, you know, I think everyone that's uh, on this chat, we've all done a barrel pick with each other or, you know, mix and match. I mean, I think that that's uh, not a secret. And one thing that you realize pretty quick is that it's a fun experience beyond what you get in a few months when it's bottled. That whole experience of picking a barrel that's unique for you and your friends or your group is something I think that most people in bourbon really uh, kind of appreciate and they, they desire. Once we kind of saw that the bourbon boom had hit and these distilleries started slowing down their picks or there wasn't enough to go around, it's kind of like that point, well, maybe we could just buy some good barrels and provide picks for our friends. You know, how can we actually still do picks, do our own barrel picks, and, and let our friends do barrel picks? Uh, that's kind of how, you know, from my perspective, they really got off the ground was uh, we can't go pick the Four Roses barrel because they're allocated, and we can't go pick a Weller. So, so what is it that we can pick? And the options were pretty slim. Now we can actually, you know, buy a group of barrels and let, let Dad's Rick and Bourbon come pick one. I'll jump in next. I think uh, I, I agree with everything Mike said. Um, we just saw a gap. There was there was a gap in the whole process. Just to even get a pick to align with a retailer or a liquor store or a restaurant is difficult. It's not the easiest thing to do. I mean, we've all been through that. We've seen that process go down. I, I mean, so my background, it's kind of weird. Like the one thing that I think how it started, why it's going well is Mike and James and myself are three really different people and are good at different things completely. I was an accountant. I'm very like, I come from that side of the world. So I see things a little bit more from a, like a process and the whole process of liquor period, and especially when you get to the barrel picking level, it's so convoluted and difficult to even navigate. And I mean, our goal ultimately is going to be to simplify that. Now, it, it's a long road. We got a lot of different things to do and throw against the wall and hope some things stick. But like, that's going to be our goal ultimately in the end is, you know, create that experience, create that ability for more normal people to have access to this experience that we've all been lucky enough to do the last years. Yeah, like these guys said, um, you know, I come from the retail side of things and, you know, there's always been a void on, you know, filling for barrel picks. You know, private groups come to come to us all the time and ask, you know, can we get a barrel of this or can we get a barrel of that? And unfortunately, there's not enough to go around. It's a hole we're trying to fill with what we're doing. We're not going to put out a product that we don't put our name behind. So if it's not ready, you know, we're not going to put out a young bourbon or anything like that. That was a great point, James, because I think... Being an NDP, sometimes people get stigma. They're, they're trying to cash flow. They're trying to churn barrels, bring money in. And 
we all come from the bourbon dork world. <laughs> That's what we all are. We like this niche. We appreciate the product. And we don't, exactly what James said, we don't want to just start dropping two-year MGP ju- juice or Indiana bourbon or that's not our goal here. Like we really do want to have a good product and that's what we want to come out with. And we may be slower with availability on some things at certain times. And sometimes we may have a lot of really good stuff that we think is ready. So it's going to be a very interesting business model to me and it's going to ebb and flow and it's going to be neat to watch go down. Yeah. So first thing I was kind of thinking of and try to keep this in a bit of an order of a, you know, I guess progression as far as starting at the ground and, and going up. How many sources are, are we eyeballing at least initially and then short, medium, long term plays in that space? Well, I think, you know, there's a few things that probably anyone that's listening to your podcast would know. And it's what distilleries do you see a lot of craft labels behind? And that's kind of what's available for the most part in bulk. So, you know, without disclosing, if you're a Tennessee distillery, they're not Jack Daniels, you probably have a lot of old stock that you might be even selling to ex-football players or to, you know, uh, <laughs> other craft companies. And, and stuff like that is, you know, been pretty readily available. Some other bigger distilleries uh, that were kind of, in, you know, not producing use some of that stuff for a few years and, uh, and they've kind of weaned off it. So we're seeing a, a glut of that. But as James kind of said earlier, not that it's not good, but what we've tried of samples of, we just weren't ready to buy that and put our name behind it. There are several sources, you know, we're working every day or every month. We're working hard to try to bring, bring the best barrels in to be able to offer that. Um, we've brought in some barrels that we'll actually probably never sell or we might, we'll probably lose money on. We've made some mistakes as far as <laughs> is James drinking that now. We've made some mistakes. Uh, wow, this is 10 plus years. This has got to be good. And let's buy, uh, you know, let's buy several, and then it gets in. You're like, this, this is bad. We, I'll, we won't put our name behind it. So when you look at that, uh, I think that's kind of what we're trying to to do. And James is uh, integral in that part, tasting through these samples and deciding kind of which lots that we do go after. How does it work? Like you're out there getting barrels. Are you just sending James and saying, go pick us some winners, and hoping he's the good bait, and you're just a <laughs> casting them off from the shore and saying, all right, have at it. For the, you know, I'll let James kind of chime in, but for the most part, I don't think we've bought a single barrel or, uh, or a lot of barrels that James hasn't uh, gave this thumbs up on. We uh, definitely respect his ability and his palate and everything he's tasted. So James is definitely integral in, in sourcing. We taste these all together most of the time anyway. Um, and, and we could talk about them and, you know, agree, disagree, whatever we like, but Depending on, you know, who, what, when, and where, um, you know, we had opportunity to buy some really good uh, Indiana rice. And, you know, we, we jumped on those luckily when we did because we can't get any more of them. And, you know, a lot that we're learning in this, you know, is availability uh, on a larger scale, you know, than just one barrel at a time at a liquor store. Uh, you know, to now we're looking, you know, to buy multiple barrels at a time. So it's really neat to be able to try different samples from a bunch of different people. Just the other side of the aspect from, from retail. So where do you actually have to go? I mean, obviously not giving everybody the secret sauce away. Are there multiple places you have to go to be able to find these barrels or are you going to contract to stores directly? What just generally, if I wanted to go do this myself, what would I have to do? First thing you would need to do is probably check yourself into a psych ward because it's, it's definitely will make you go crazy. It's, it's not as easy as we were hoping it would be. You know, we've been doing this for actually most people think that, you know, these guys, you know, have only been doing this for two months, but it's been two years. Um, you know, and, that's, and more than that, it's been two years basically since we've purchased any barrels. You know, we, we bought stuff uh, basically two years ago that, uh, and we're just now to a point where we actually are, are close to having a, a ready product. It's, it's definitely challenging and fun, and we've just kind of, you know, hit the tip of the iceberg as far as that goes. Uh, I mean, I'll jump in real quick. I think it's <laughs> the biggest challenge for us. I mean, when Mike and I and James started talking about this two years ago, you, know, you start buying some younger products in four and five and you just start maturing and you're just trying to stratify out your inventory. But the amount of cash flow it takes to start just buying things and sitting on it and then navigate the legal side of this. So you're doing everything appropriately and paying the correct taxes and aligning with, you know, the people you need to align with to get the distribution. It is a long, long road. I'm fairly a well-versed person with my day job. 
like in contracts and navigating systems. And the alcohol industry is amazing. Like it's amazingly complex. And that was the biggest surprise to me. I thought it was going to be a little bit easier to at least navigate it all. And it, it was not. So I mean, I've learned a ton. It's awesome. Now we're kind of on the back end and we're getting ready to launch and, you know, it'll be much easier going forward. But what I've learned in the last two years, it's, it's kind of mind numbing, honestly, like a lot of people think they know. And like, I was one of those people and you really don't need to you jump in it. So kind of back to the juice. Have you uh, run across any you know barrels or lots of barrels from different brokers where, you know, on paper, it should probably be the same as something else you've already tasted as far as most likely source, age, you know, other intrinsic factors. But obviously the brokers had it, so they stored it somewhere. It technically aged differently, had different air, heat, whatnot. And when you got into the barrels and tasted the juice, it was just completely day and night difference. Yeah, there's been one specifically, as I was trying to, I was saying earlier, is that uh, there was a, a lot of barrels that were 10 plus years. Uh, they gave us the source. We can't disclose it, but at one time it, it might have came from a distillery that won whiskey of the year. So anyway, we were really excited about this and uh, it came in and boy, we, we could have been more wrong uh, in that sense. So there's definitely times where you know, you think you know what it is or you think what you know how it should be and you, you get it and go, what what do we just do? The other part of that, too, is that, you know, James has probably had more, you know, from different craft distillers and other ones than, than anyone, you know, me and first me and Casey. Uh, but there's other stuff, too, that once you taste it and you get a, a sample of a lot, you go, you know what this really is? This is that stuff from two years ago that was, you know, fire. I mean, what? That's that's amazing. I'm glad this became available, and, and it only becomes available usually for a short period of time. We should probably get in a, a, a bit of a quick roll call as far as what everybody's got in the glass, so, so nobody thinks we're abstaining for this entire show. I'd, I'd hate for <laughs> Monica to go on about it. <laughs> hey, I'll go first. I'm doing that beautiful 16 and a half OESO now. And just since James is on, I'm going to pull out the James backer with the high on corns because that's a Probably one of my favorite seven-year picks I've tried from Willet. I'm drinking some seven-year-old Indiana rye. <laughs> Cash drink might have come out of wood product at my house. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer for Mike. He's not drinking because he was on vacation all week in Florida, and he's probably still drunk, so he's probably good. He still has margarita in his veins. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was talking to you guys before we went live, but I spent all weekend in, in the panhandle of Florida. And, uh, you know, Memorial Day weekend down on the beach, you know, <laughs> d- does your toll on the liver and the kidneys. You know, people down there were partying like it was spring break. So uh, I'm going to have to quarantine for a few weeks. Stay away from Zeke. No cuddling. What are you drinking on, Edwards? I don't think you ever said. Smoke turkey. Mm, that's right. I'm still waiting for mine, Zeke. It'll be there Friday. Don't worry. Uh oh, lovers quarrel. Yo, know, Hyde, I could get you a bottle before Friday if you need it. I, I appreciate that. Maybe I could trade you a, a sweet glass. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, you so could get me so- a shirt, but it would have to be like three shirts sewn into one, right? Like a snuggie. Yeah. Hey, well, so tell everyone earlier. I mean, once again, guys, uh, we have, we don't have the official fan club yet, but Edwards has already signed up for six bottles. So this is the thing that I was bringing up and, and I think, you know, obviously y'all are well connected in the whiskey industry and also within the whiskey groups and the drinkers. And I think I'm already on the hook for about six Nashville barrel company bottles in the various groups we're in. I mean, Zeke, you gotta be up there as well. Yeah. And, you know, we had some fun times picking these. We were uh, fortunate enough when, you know, Prov and Co. were in town back in uh, January. Well, granted, we taste through a, I don't even remember, a big lineup of samples. I think by the end of it, we were all just laughing, like, I don't even know what we're going to pick, but here's what I like. Go with it, Prov. <laughs> I think we all laughed and walked out that day, like, how many barrels did we end up with? What are we responsible <laughs> for? <again?" laughs> And of course, the uh, the Bob Little charity pick for his son, George, that was special and fun. And again, appreciate you and James, Mike, taking care of us on that one and really pulling out some winners for that pick. You know, once again, it's, uh, that's one thing that's kind of been really awesome watching this is the beyond the bourbon community supporting us is um, a lot of people actually came to us to, to do barrel picks, to use that to raise money for different charity you know, events or different causes. So it, it's really cool being on this side of it because, you know, I, I was doing the fuck cancers and doing this and that. So it's kind of cool now on the other side 
to be able to offer, you know, barrel picks uh, experiences for these guys. It's definitely cool to see the full circle of it. One one last thing to add real quick, Edwards, is you, you know, said you had bought six bottles. This is a true story is that Friday or Saturday, I actually bought two bottles of Nashville Barrel Company stuff from a group. A group that's, you know, getting their bottles. Uh, I didn't, you know, we didn't have any, any of those. We didn't keep any of those. And uh, so I actually reached out to the person that uh, was ahead of the group and was like, can I buy two bottles? At first, I thought they, they thought I was kidding, right? They're like, well, what, what do you mean? Beyond the barrels, actually, I'm buying bottles myself, John. The question I would have is, what is the one that you love so much that you had to get that group's <laughs> bottle? Well, how about this? It was it was not the love of the of the bourbon or rye as much as you know they're all great. It was uh, the dream team pick is could be one of the best stickers slash the the juice is good. And there's a lot about it, and I'm a sucker for having you know a bottle with my friend's face on it. So when those guys came up with their with their label and even their stamp, it, they they just they just really killed it. That means you have to look at Ryan Lay's face. <laughs> yeah there is but george clooney's on there too you got it strictly for chewy and jimmy may let's be honest chewy's <laughs> taking over customer service for us so it's you know i felt like i should have one of his bottles here but the real question here is would you buy a bottle with edward's face on it <laughs> well it'd have to be a magnum right so <laughs> edward you there yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> i mean Sorry, buddy. I mean, it's uh, usually you're not speechless. I was speechless at that one. <laughs> so, so how, many, how many picks did you guys end up rolling out, roughly? Or, or if you have an exact count, that's even better. 20 picks will be hitting here in the next few weeks. Pretty solid haul for sure. And uh, I, I guess I'll go ahead and tee up two. You know, I think the, the first round of picks was the initial splash into the market, so to speak. What's the mainstay and, and you know, I guess a uh, regular daily shelf stock looking like? We've got two single barrels that will be coming out local here in the Nashville market. Those are cast strength, uh, two completely different barrels. They're a lot of fun. And then we're, we're looking at lining up some more, uh, some more rise for our second run as well. And so those are actually going to be, I know you're going to have some at Cool Springs Wine and Spirits, some at Radnor Wine and Spirits. I think Elixir, where else is getting those? Getting some out to Old Fort out in Murfreesboro, uh, out towards the Mount Juliet area, you know, Providence Wine and Spirits, uh, some areas like that. Uh, we will have uh, more locations for everybody here in the near future. Gotcha. And, you know, granted, we all love uh, our cash drink stuff pretty well, but obviously there's a, a fair amount of the market out there that, Still likes that nine hundred proof range. Is there going to be a uh, you know a, a small batch daily drinker quote unquote in the works here? You know, it's funny you bring that up because that's actually for six months. You know, it's definitely been a topic of conversation. Is there's the two parts of it. It's the do you try to cater to the you know eighty five proof kind of people that are getting into bourbon, or do you kind of cater to you know the the cast strength fans and. James, Casey, myself, we've, we've talked about this numerous times and, you know, we have to keep going back to our roots of why we started this. And we started it for our friends and for, you know, to be able to offer single barrel picks that we could kind of control uh, in that sense. So having a shelf one is kind of not a top priority right now for us as much as just trying to make sure that the enthusiasts really can kind of do what they want or, or get their picks. And most of them want cash strength. Now, if you want to come in and you, and you want to proof it down to 90 after you pick a barrel, I mean, we could probably do that for you. But that's not been kind of our focus right now. I think the next focus will probably be, it wouldn't be a shelfer, Zeke, like, you know, 90 proof. It would probably be more just, you know, roll out some different store picks. We're, you know, we're in Tennessee distribution. So, I mean, I'm sure there's a couple of stores that want this. So that may be a next phase. Um, but, yeah, like Mike said, we – We've run from like yes to no, probably back and forth 10 times on, yes, we need a shelf for 85 proof. Yes, we need a shelf for 90. No, we don't. That's ridiculous. Why would we do that? And it, it's kind of wild. Just your thought process during it. And because there's great points on both sides of that argument, you know, do you, should, should the brand name or label just be associated with cast strength and have something different? Like, I don't know. There, I don't know the right answer to that. So. I mean, that's, that's stuff we're going to navigate going forward. And I mean, we like, like Mike said, we know our roots and we're going to stick there in the beginning and 
try to launch the right way and just be transparent and make sure everybody knows what they're drinking and it's going to be good stuff. That's, that's what we want to deliver. This is a little difficult to answer, obviously, with logistics and i don't want to go too far into this but like ndps a lot of times you're renting space as you get going you find a distillery and you rent some space and you you hang out there for a little bit do you think there are plans in the future to have your own place your own tasting room like how big is this going to get i think john that we're basically going to see what the market dictates we're just going to kind of follow where it points us uh, right now, the market's been really supportive, but you know, let's just say in two months or two years, James's hard seltzer line takes off. All of a sudden, there's no, you know, bourbon and rye or hot anymore, and it's Zima and you know, in rum. I mean, who knows? Uh, obviously, any anyone's goal would be, can we make this hobby into a full time job? You know, is is there enough barrels? Is there enough customers? And obviously, if you did that, could could you grow it to be a bigger thing? So that'd be all world if you could snap your fingers. But uh, I think we're just kind of taking it day by day. I mean, let's next week is going to be our first time to actually have our product in people's hands. So uh, it's a first big step, and we're we're kind of excited. I know I am to see. What does it look like in two years? I think for a lot of us, it's an interesting proposition, what you guys are doing, and and it's not something that everybody has been doing. I mean, you see a lot of NDPs, and they want to have a profile. And it's, hey, we're getting all these barrels, but we're going to stick with this certain profile when you taste us even though we are an NDP, you're going to kind of get the gist of what we are, where you guys are like, you know what? Screw that. We're going to go out and get the best barrels we can. And if we can get some of these barrels that are older Indian rye, great. We're going to start there. And then all of a sudden, if we get 10 year barrels from Timbuktu and they're really good, we're going to go ahead and add those to our arsenal. And when you come do a tasting with us and when you come do a barrel selection, James is going to be your swami and guide you through the whole process and bring out different barrels for you and and tell you what they're all about. But y'all are just trying to find the best barrels you can and then allow people to pick from them, right? That's exactly it. That's our goal. I think our name kind of backs that up. We're not Nashville Whiskey Company, Nashville Bourbon Company. We're Nashville Barrel Company. And whether that's going to be great rum that's presented to us, or maybe it's mezcal aged in bourbon barrels in Mexico and brought back. But I don't know. We don't know what it's going to be in the future. It could be the James Hard Seltzer. That could blow up. Be awesome. Do barrel pick the Hard Seltzer. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> so I, I, I mean, like even if we do stick with bourbon and whiskey, because that's where we, that's where we're from. That's what we know. I think like we are almost anti that traditional marketing model where you are supposed to get like you know a standard, and you're supposed to kind of stay around that standard. And you know, if somebody sees it seven times, they're going to remember it. But our whole plan and goal is kind of just to have like a very just unorthodox taste, like go back and forth. We just want to have the widest, broadest, weirdest stuff available in barrels. So hopefully you can appeal to more taste and you don't know what you can bring in. You don't know where it's going to lead in the future. I definitely think that's a very good and open mindset as far as having a, a plethora of products come in. I guess kind of in a, a 180 degree train of thought though, as long as the market to a degree is dictating what's available, then inevitably, especially if bourbon continues to grow, a supply could be an issue and or just the rising cost of business. And so to that, you know, something I would think of was maybe not doing it with the goal of having a, a profile or a specific flavor in mind, but has, uh, has it been tendered the idea of simply, uh, you know, doing any contract distilling just so there's always some bourbon on hand down the road some rye on hand and other things along those lines definitely zeke i think that you know a lot of people are actually doing contract distilling and talking about it and actually moving forward uh, and we're definitely in that same boat you know the one thing i think that john kind of hit on perfectly was that aspect of we're not we, we know we don't have this story about our grandfather's recipe that came in an attic or you know we found out that our uncle's brother you know was a distiller in the 1800s you know and that's kind of the what they hang their hat on that we have to do this because this has been a 200 year recipe we don't have some story you know true or untrue so kind of gives us more flexibility right i mean uh most shelf bourbons have a consistent taste and that's kind of what they want like fast food it's you want people to go and then burger tastes the same no matter where you go. Well, we're completely not that. We don't have a, a recipe that we you know we live by, and we just basically uh, uh, just try to find the best barrels available and 
and uh, keep that going. I kind of like that, though. I mean, in the tech industry, you're always talking about a disruptor. And I come from tech, Heinz. I know you come from tech. And you're always looking for what is that brand that what is that company that's going to disrupt the industry? And I think there's a little bit of that in all of you in the sense that you're not out there to do what everybody else is doing. You're doing exactly what you're doing. And you might not have that story of, you know, someone in your family that was a distiller, you're resurrecting a pre-prohibition brand. You're just basically saying there's a lot of good whiskey out there that either for whatever reason, a distillery has discarded or given to somebody else. And you guys are like the American pickers of the whiskey industry where you're just kind of saying hey show me your rick house i'm gonna go play around in it and i'm gonna see if i can find something good and james is the mike wolf going out there trying to find that stuff and then negotiate it bring it in at a cheaper price so that casey doesn't have a heart attack i think you nailed it john I, you know I, I think it's the only time i've actually agreed with you and like back to back so uh <laughs> i see zeke almost lost as much on that one but I'm almost feeling bad with all these compliments I'm giving you. He's going to sleep happy now. I can only imagine <laughs> when he walks in the bedroom and the wife just looks at him. What the hell is wrong with you? Yeah. Like, why are you? <laughs> yeah, she better send me a uh, you know some cookies or at least a card. If uh... <laughs> <laughs> this smile on my face right now is all all I need. <laughs> so more importantly, I mean, you guys touched on it. You might go away from whiskey. You could find rum. You could find mezcal. You could find a tequila, dare I say a scotch at some point. Whatever it is, you guys are just trying to find the best damn barrels and bring them here to Nashville, Tennessee. Correct. And, now, and obviously, we actually have some experimental stuff going, too. So, uh, yeah. you know, we've already started, you know, trying stuff outside of bourbon and rye. So we're actually kind of eager to see what, where that goes as well. James, what you got cooking up there? Because you, I know sometimes it's really hard to get you to shut up talking about all the stuff that, that's going on. But tell me what you have going on. I mean, we just have a bunch of fun stuff coming up here in the future i mean we already have rum laying down in some fun barrels some experimental stuff like mike was talking about uh you know we've got canadian rise you know talking about tequila mezcal something like that we definitely have a a connect that we're we're hoping to be able to use to get something back here to the states that we can we can use under our brand you know just a bunch of fun stuff it doesn't have to be a big name brand but also you know something something comes up that everybody's looking for we're definitely going to jump on it so if I wanted to get a barrel from Nashville Barrel Company, should I reach out to James, Casey, Mike, all of you? Is there one place you would rather people go to get a barrel? If you want to reply, you should reach out to James. <laughs> James has been the point man, uh, working with the clubs and working with the retailers. You know, we try not to have too many cooks in the kitchen. Kind of as Casey was saying, we all have our, our kind of our niche or what we do that kind of really moves us forward. And James is actually uh, real organized and we try to make, you know, have that all through him. That way, you know, we don't double book or triple book or stuff like that. So, so James is it. You can, you know, you can reach him by going to the website or uh, his Instagram or Facebook or, heck, should, can, I, can I get a number on this, James? Can I just tell the- Yeah, no, no so. No, slide into james's dms is basically what heinz is telling you oh, to do sorry, on, on facebook at james davenport uh instagram at james d698 shoot me a message if you're interested in talk about barrels there's no other place to go but up and i think you're on to something pretty good i could tell from the fact that everybody i know in the damn whiskey community has taken a nashville barrel company pick and they're all asking zeke and i if we want one thank you for that when's dad drinking bourbon gonna gonna do uh, uh, just, just to clear the air for anyone that's wondering the only reason we didn't take one is because we were already buying cases uh, worth from all the other groups we're in that you know we need to fulfill those obligations so we also may or may not be holding out for you know one of these uh unicorns that, that roll through the, the ricks there and you know we might can get our hands on see i kind of thought that given zeke and heinz relationship and their lunch dates and special secret times that <laughs> we were gonna have first crack at all these barrels and then when we didn't i said well we'll hold out for the next round when they get some different stuff in there because of that love affair maybe we should do the first ever champagne barrel maybe just like age it for a day and then we could bottle it up. that might actually be an interesting thing to do 
Yeah, let's bundle it with some shambongs. We'll have dads drinking champagne. <laughs> <laughs> Just get the caviar and the other accessories. Well, guys, I'm sure obviously, too, that uh, the situation is going to happen pretty in the near future where we'll do a dad's drinking bourbon pick of uh, something, you know, that, you know, our cupboard's always open to you guys. Well, thank you so much for that. And for all of you, make sure to check out at Nashville Barrel Company on Instagram. Find James. James698 on Instagram, James Davenport on Facebook. He is the face of the Nashville Barrel Company. We know Casey and Hines are kind of yelling at him from behind the scenes, telling him to do more stuff and go talk to people. So (laughs) reach out to James. He is the man. He is one half of J Squared Barrels, which is another way you can find him on Instagram. So him and his friend Justin, we know they have impeccable palettes. We know they are up to good stuff and I hope to have a show with James here soon to talk about all the stuff that he and Justin are doing. But Casey, Michael, James, go find them at Nashville Barrel Company. Zeke, want to let you know before we finish this show, all of our glassware was provided by premiumbarproducts.com, including the glassware from Nashville Barrel Company. So Janie, Carson, Vicky, all the good folks over there, they make glasses for us here at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. They make glasses for Nashville Barrel Company. So whether or not you want Glen Cairns, we Glen Cairns, the Tipsy Dram, the Kenzie Dram, the Distiller's Tasting Glass, whatever it is, they have it. They can monogram it for you if you are a bigger group or a Nashville Barrel Company per se, and you want to do more than just a couple of glasses here and there, reach out to me. I'll make sure I get you in touch with them so that you can get wholesale pricing. But premiumbarproducts.com is the place where you can go get a couple glasses engraved, and it's actually laser etched. So when Zeke actually wants to say like mike will you go to the prom with me he can put it on a glenn karen glass and give it directly to mike when they have their super secret (laughs) lunches so go ahead and visit premiumbarproducts.com and find out for yourself james casey michael thank you so much hey one quick thing though when can we expect the nashville barrel company microwaves to roll out <laughs> you know, someone's actually coming over this weekend that can maybe reprogram. So uh, I'll keep you guys in, in the loop. Oh, yeah. Lastly, uh, just so I get this in there, I almost forgot. This should be running on the 27th, somewhere between the 29th and the 31st in the Day Edge Drinking Bourbon Facebook group. We will be having the first round of our KC 10 year bourbon Wolfpack split pick going out. There will be a link, there will be a password. Password is Wolfpack. I know, very innovative. But uh, first 20, 25 or so people, more or less, will uh, we'll get a bottle through that. We appreciate y'all listening and supporting us. I almost stole a case today. I thought about it. I should have. I'd cut you. <laughs> <laughs> All of you, thank you so much. Visit Nashville Barrel Company. You can find them there. You can find Zeke and I on Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dads. Find us wherever you download your podcast. Pretty sure you already have because you're listening to us right now. Please leave us an open and honest review like we leave open and honest reviews about the whiskey we drink. Zeke, where else can the folks find us? Good old Nashville, Tennessee. Opening up soon, folks. Get ready. Thanks again, guys. Cheers. Ciao. Cheers. Thanks, guys.